Hello, welcome to Hot Seat. I'm Martin Rogers, here with Professor Martin Lodge to discuss the recent Volkswagen emissions scandal. Welcome, Martin. So first of all, can you give us an overview of the situation? Well, um, at present, Volkswagen has replaced its senior management. Um, uh, we don't quite know what actually the emissions will be once we uh, sort of um, assess what these cars are. It is not quite clear how many cars are being affected uh, by this problem. More long-standingly, it has shown us um, the problem of uh, um, of relying on official data, so to speak, on emissions versus what NGOs show us, what um, road tests show us. So what specifically does this scandal refer to? I mean, I suspect there's a... I think what, what has made this a scandal is the difference between what I think everyone assumes, namely that companies game the system, uh, produce certain kind of specific cars to look good. Uh, but here I think we have a specific case of cheating uh, going on a software which seems to be, have been updated over time to basically uh, perform according uh, to particular tests only to switch off. So we have here a difference between gaming and cheating. And how did the, the issue come to light, this cheating? Well, well, sort of more or less coincidentally that an NGO which wanted to find out how clean these cars were um, suddenly realised it was much dirtier uh, uh, than, than promised and basically Volkswagen couldn't answer it and didn't come up with proper responses, claims these were technical issues that never got resolved and then finally uh, sort of it revealed itself. So that is basically how it uh, came about. It didn't come about by sort of public regulators finding things. It was um, uh, an issue which emerged via NGO testing. And what was the process of that NGO testing? Well, I mean, they basically tested the emissions um, in sort of in the real world, uh, which were found to be about 40% higher than indicated by these um, kind of the company's data. And so what was the, the problem with the testing and this issue of the golden vehicle? Well, the problem... I mean, there are two problems. I mean, it's a, it's a kind of, sort of problem relating to Volkswagen and, and, and this particular episode is um, um, that, that the tests are produced in, you might say, sort of unreal circumstances, so under laboratory conditions um, uh, and so on. Um, software has to be put into these motors because otherwise the car would uh, sort of spin out of control, so it needs to adjust to the testing conditions. Nevertheless, this software was used to then manipulate as a whole test result. So the, one of the big problems is that uh, state the, the, the way in which emissions are being sort of assessed and so on does not reflect real driving. This is something which has been around the car uh, pr um, process um, you know, for a long time, there's nothing new um, about this. Um, the golden vehicle refers to the idea that you basically sort of establish or create cars which perform perfectly for the test, but you would never take on the road. So what is the role for regulatory authorities in this area? Well, there are two, two debates here. One is uh, basically why is it that uh, it seems that sort of scandals um, are revealed in the US rather than in, let's say, the motherland of the company, uh, Germany, for example. Uh, so that is sort of one problem here. Why is it that the US finds wrongdoing rather than European regulators? But the broader question for the European regulatory context is that uh, the European provisions are much lighter than the US standards, which to some extent might explain why Volkswagen went down this road. They had backed technolog technologically the wrong horse um, and therefore couldn't hit the US standard, but they might not even hit the EU standard. Um, so we have got softer standards in the European Union. However, there are also um, companies can basically sort of choose where they want to be assessed um, or certified. Um, the different certifiers are in a, you might say, commercial competition. So what we are having here is a setup where different jurisdictions compete for the lightest burden. And you might say that is not the appropriate way to go about it when we come to environmental regulation uh, because the incentives are uh, misaligned here. So where do we go from here and what are the likely punishments that Volkswagen is facing? I mean, Volkswagen, I think, still needs to find out um, what has happened. It seems that uh, so in terms of responsibility at present, I think nobody really knows uh, who did what and who knew what. Um, te technically, Volkswagen needs to sort out uh, it, its, its cars, um, uh, the consequences of being able to sell certain products on a continuing basis or not. Uh, so that is the operational side. There will be the fine and compensation payment uh, side and um, what the courts will say. 
say um, and here I think because of this willingness and the wrongdoing uh, the likelihood of higher fines is much higher than for example when we look at BP and uh, Deepwater Horizon where you might say this was an accident, this was intentional. Um, and then thirdly at the third level um, I think there will be more consideration about how uh, basically cars are being assessed in terms of their emission standards. There will be debates about um, regulation and testing regimes. Um, am I um, convinced on the last, last part that European regulation will really shift towards a different regime? Um, I would say no to that. Uh, the lobbying power is far too strong for that. So currently this is a US-centric issue. Is this likely to spread to Europe and further afield? I mean, I think it has already spread uh, to the European um, context because it's not clear whether the, uh, the, this Volkswagen cars hit even the European standards. So in that sense, uh, uh, while the US is basically maybe the, at the moment sort of market-wise and uh, uh, pe penalty-wise sort of the centre of attention, I think this will also quite, have quite significant impact on uh, the European market for Volkswagen and the reputation of Volkswagen in, in Germany itself. Great. Thank you very much, Martin. You're off the hot seat. Thank you.